Hello again, everyone. Edwin Lerner back once again. In this YouTube astrological segment, I'm going to be talking about uh, astrology and the death of legendary uh, NFL head coach uh, Don Shula. Uh, many of you NFL fans out there may have heard of Don Shula. He was a great uh, NFL coach in his illustrious career. He had a uh, number of um, you know, NFL um, playoff appearances. He won at least one Super Bowl. I, I know he won the one with the 72, 1972 Dolphins when they were really infallible. They, they set a, a record for infallibility. They went undefeated through the regular season and postseason en route to a Super Bowl uh, victory. And Looking at uh, this, I mean, I found that he, that the report on ESPN was that uh, ESPN.com had reported that he died. It was peacefully uh, in his sleep. So what I was able to do is, of course, I didn't have his actual time of birth, so I had to improvise again and do a solar sunrise uh, chart with uh, Don Shula and. First thing, I mean, they said he died uh, peacefully, uh, I mean, died peacefully at home. Well, he's got Pluto in Cancer, and Pluto in Cancer, even though generational, generational can sometimes indicate a death that takes place uh, at home. He also had uh, Taurus, uh, based on the solar sunrise chart, Taurus on the fourth uh, house cusp, and that could indicate a death, uh, end of life that could be very peaceful and uh, tranquil. At the time, he also had a transit sun in Taurus setting that, so that could be a focus on uh, really uh, uh, as far as uh, the end of life and in some instances, and one that was very, of course, in this case, rather peaceful. I found it interesting, though, they said he died peacefully uh, at his home, but the thing about it is the thing that it concerned me is that the transit sun was not far from his natal uh, Chiron in Taurus and I'm just wondering if there may have been there may have been some issues like like with the throat or, or the neck or, or something or something that involved a uh, coughing when he had uh, in maybe some coughing issues that may have been involved uh, when he had when he died or, or the, again there was something with the throat or the neck area uh, perhaps but this is just speculation and for right now I mean we all I have to go with is what is stated on the report uh, that I saw and wikipedia.org didn't have really much of anything uh, on there as far as elaborating on any specifics but as far as his death went now in the solar sunrise chart he had a number of transits that were in the first house of of course of vitality in the physical uh, body you're talking about um, looking at looking at this transit Saturn was in uh, the first house and of course that could give uh, some I mean that could give some issues uh, difficulties with the physical body now I don't know if he had any uh, or not but the thing about what I noticed is that transit Saturn was by his natal Mercury so I'm thinking that maybe there were some issues with breathing at the time that might have been erratic and spreadic. Saturn can sometimes be about our limitations our res uh, about restrictions sometimes debilitations and if it's hitting one's natal Mercury sometimes it can indicate that there can be some issues or some difficulty uh, in terms of one's breathing Aquarius of course is a sign that's very erratic and sporadic very uh, unpredictable or even issues with the uh, with, when you're talking about mercury also is connected uh, with the hands and hands and with the arms Aquarius can be uh, associated uh, with nerves and, and, and even in mercury as well so there might have been something going on too where he was dealing with some issues with some nerve or nerve damage it would not surprise me at this time but I really don't know any of this for a fact again this is just speculation and conjecture on my party also had in the solar sunrise chart transit Pluto in the first house the first house is about our vitality um, our, our energy uh, it's like the Sun in that respect 
Pluto, of course, is about uh, is about death. And sometimes when people have Pluto and in transit, if it's hitting one's natal sun, one's uh, first house, or a, it can it can suggest. I mean, Pluto is about obliteration, destruction. The first house again is about our vitality, our energy, and it can be about that obliteration of the vitality and and energy. Uh, so. Those are some ways I think this may have manifested and panned out uh, with Don uh, Shula as far as astrology and in some uh, correlation with his uh, with his death. And he did live to 90 years old, a Sun and Capricorn person. I do believe Capricorn is really like unequivocally the oldest of the zodiac signs being uh, ruled by Saturn. Saturn can be connected with old, with older age, uh, aging, and another thing I noticed too. He also, um, at this time of his death, he had transit, transit south node had just separated from his uh, his natal uh, Saturn, and Saturn, of course, in in the solar sunrise chart would be the ruler of the first house cusp of uh, of Capricorn of 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 the of the of that ascendant, but also the ruler of his sun in Capricorn as well. And you're talking about set when you're when you're moving away uh, when, when when the south node is conjunct and it's in separating conjunction, especially from a planet, it could be moving away from from a situation. Saturn is about old old age, and this is this could be an indicator. And the ruler of his uh, being the ruler of the the first house in this case, even though it is an improvised solar uh, sunrise chart, moving away from life in some case from your vitality, uh, though that that could be an indicator as far as that goes. Being in Capricorn, not surprising that he uh, that his, somebody that had lived. Uh, a prodigious amount of years. Capricorn is again; it's a sign associated with longevity. Cat Saturn is can be associated with that as well. But when you have transit uh, south node, it's hitting that energy; it's separating itself from it. It could be moving away from longevity, from that, from that aging. And uh, sometimes that I mean in this case, perhaps this was an indicator that that his passing was on the horizon that it was in that it was coming in the near uh, future now another thing I noticed was is that he had also transit Uranus was on uh, was close to his uh, in the solar sunrise chart the fourth house cusp and again the solar sunrise chart what I did was again I improvised by putting the Sun at the same spot as the ascendant and using that time of birth that would do that and all and whatever house placements fell accordingly that's what that's when and wherever they would be positioned that's where they would be positioned at but based on that time now another thing uh, what I noticed uh, in his chart uh, too as far as a transit goes he also had transit north node and cancer in the sixth house of health and sometimes when you're talking about the north node in transit it can be about issues we have to confront and ones we have to uh, address and this is uh, and, and in this case it, it, it's about could have been about one's uh, one's health now I don't know I me mean, cancer of course rule the zodiac sign cancer is connected with the breast and the chest area even the stomach you you could say I'm thinking maybe there may have been some issues associated with that uh, when he passed when he passed away now I noticed another thing too this is off the death aspect of his chart that I thought was very interesting he actually he had a based on the solar sunrise chart at the um, it put the moon and it, it, it gave him a mutable t-square configuration with Jupiter in Gemini in the fifth house at that focal point of the configuration now Jupiter and when you're talking about a focal point in a t-square configuration that is considered the overemphasis over accentuation point basically that is you're trying to reconcile any issues set up by the opposition the opposition in this case was the moon uh, moon and Pisces opposing the Neptune and Virgo now Jupiter in Gemini in the fifth house I mean I could see 
why he could have re that could really enlarge a lot of cerebral energy, a lot of mental agility in sports. Being in uh, the fifth house, but it can be a point of overemphasis. This could have been where he he just folk might have focused on this so much maybe at times to the exclusion of other things but interestingly enough the point opposite that focal point would be sagittarius in the 11th house that would be sport that would be sports aspirations so in goals and and the thing and when you have that that opposite point is supposed to be the point in that when you're talking about the opposite point of a focal point in a t-square configuration that's supposed to be the point of alleviation and where i mean it may not eradicate that tension that exists with the t-square configuration but it could help alleviate and help deal with it uh, a little bit a little bit better and the thing about it is it, it's really uh, and having, and of course, having sports as a goal, as an aspiration, as athletics, uh, those are those are things that I mean for him, which obviously is something that could have figured uh, very, I would say, very prominently uh, in his life scheme, and that would probably be uh, a vast uh, understatement. So I thought it was just very, um, very interesting, and. The thing, uh, what I'm, uh, what I'm looking at, uh, too, and uh, with with Don Don Shula, I mean, he was just obviously, I mean, a coaching uh, genius to say the least. Having Mercury, a uh, very, I'd say, very well placed in Aquarius. It may not, I mean, Mercury in Aquarius, it's not in its dignity, um, but or, or its exaltation, but it is very well placed. Mercury in Aquarius can manifest in very innovative, ingenious thinking, very reforming uh, mental uh, energy. And the fact that his mind was probably very future oriented, if he was to lose one game, he might be considered to perceive one battle, one NFL game. He would likely be very progressive in his thinking. He'd be the, like, you know, that was one game. We're going to come back and we're going to do whatever we can to merge victorious in the next one. So I would say with Mercury and Aquarius, that was very likely his mindset. And he also had such a strong energy, Capricorn uh, energy in his chart, number of planets in Capricorn, of course, including the Sun and Saturn. And when you have all that energy in uh, in Capricorn, I mean, people have always talked about Don Shula as being somebody that was very uh, consistent. Capricorn energy, of course, can uh, epitomize consistency. That is a word that is strongly synonymous with the zodiac sign. He was somebody that, of course, was very, very consistent and somebody obviously very methodical, likely very orthodox, but having the Mercury in Aquarius was a person that could think outside the box from time to time. And I'm sure he had very innovative uh, coaching schemes, uh, plans, uh, to whether it be defensive or offensive schemes, uh, game plans for his uh, for his team. Um, Mercury and Aquarius also their thinking can be tied in with being able to really observe and, and analyze others uh, very well and I'm sure he was able to do so as far as looking at as far as uh, opposing teams for the coming week for the coming Sunday or what have you who he, the teams that he'd have to encounter. So anyway another thing too in the solar sunrise chart also put neptune in the eighth house so i'm wondering if this might be where his death might be a little bit nebulous and unclear and it's something that maybe there might be a little bit more to it that we may not ever maybe know about or not know about uh right away but right now the only thing i can go on is the fact that he did die peacefully in his home uh so and i hope that is how he actually uh died i all, all the um give my condolences to the family or close friends if they happen to hear this and uh, anyway uh, anyway people that'll conclude this youtube astrological segment until next time people edwin learns saying stay well